Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. I hope you're doing well today. I have another Goosebumps book review for you today. Of course, I read series 2000, number six, I'm Your Evil Twin. And then I read this one immediately after that, uh, this one I like a little bit more, but not by much more, <laughs> but a little bit more. Uh, it's Goosebumps, a classic book from the old classic 62 book series. Number 46, How to Kill a Monster. I think there's also a TV episode of this I've never seen. I could be wrong, but I think there is. I don't know yet. Uh, I'm going to look forward. I might try to watch it tonight. Maybe review it tomorrow or the next day. I'm not sure. By the way, it is Easter weekend, so happy Easter tomorrow on Sunday. Today is Saturday. I'm really hoping that you guys are having a good weekend. Uh, I had three days off. And I'm really stoked. It's been great so far. Anyway, How to Kill a Monster. Kind of an underwhelming cover that has nothing to do with the book, sort of, kind of. Um, <laughs> you can tell it's a great example of one of those books that Tim Jacobus was handed a description of what some of the book is about, and uh, some details in the book changed over time, and I'll get to that in a moment. But out of these two books that I read today, I read most of I, I Am Your Evil Twin today, as I said in my previous review that I uploaded right before this for that book, and then I read this entirely in like an hour or two. Uh, I just flew through it, and it was... This to me is better than I Am Your Evil Twin. However, I think by the ending twist it becomes more bland than the other one. Does that make sense? How weird is that? It, does that happen to you guys? You get through a book and you're like, oh, I really, really like this. And then at the end, you're like, oh, oh God, you ruined it. Um, How to Kill a Monster. I have kind of avoided this one for a long time. I love the cotton candy colored cover of the book, the pink and the blues. I love all that, uh, even though the picture is always kind of, you know, disappointed me. Even the little things you have on, you know, the cover, like over here, the little words, like, for example, Not a Living Dummy says, he walks, he stalks. This one says, step two, one, or, I messed it up. Step one, run. Step two, run faster. He walks, he stalks on that terrifying original Not a Living Dummy cover. And then, like, I think two and three say something along the lines of, like, he's still walking, he's still stalking, something like that. Those are great. Those are scary. And I know that all, all, not all the Goosebumps books need to be scary. They can have comedic books and adventurous books and whatever. This one's kind of a nice little small adventure I liked. Um, I love the setup for this. I love the kind of atmosphere, the setting for it. I love all that. But everything else kind of falls apart over time for me. Um, so to start off, you have a young girl whose mom married another guy uh, after her parents divorced. And this other guy has a kid named Clark. And... Um, what is her main, her main girl's name? I'm sorry, dude. I just I always forget everybody's names. These characters are always kind of forgettable. The main character girl, the main character girl's name is Gretchen. Uh, Gretchen and her stepbrother Clark are going to be spending time at uh, Gretchen's grandparents, not Clark's grandparents, but Gretchen's grandparents. And they live in a castle out in like a swampy area, and the parents are going to drop them off. And as they're going there, they have some hardships, like a flat tire and that kind of thing. And when they get there, they drop the kids off, and the parents leave. And the grandparents are very sweet, very nice. The castle is enormous. There's very few windows windows in this castle. Like They're only in like hallways, not really like bedrooms or anything, which is weird. I'm in the middle of a renovation right now. Could you not really take your big old castle and cut a couple of holes in the walls? It's probably not that simple with stone. I don't even know if it is stone, but still, I assume it is if it's described as a castle. Because what else would you look at? What house took like a castle that's not stone? Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's enough of the rambling. Um, so they're spending time here, and they kind of just go on small adventures throughout the entire house looking at all the rooms and stuff on the first couple of days. The grandparents cook food and stuff like pancakes for breakfast the, Im the immediate morning after they arrive. And one thing they happen to notice is that the grandparents, specifically the grandma, cooks a lot of food. There's only like four of them where they're hanging out and spending the night here. And of course they have the dog there too. There's only four of them and they're making like 50 pancakes for some reason. Nobody really understands why. And uh, the grandparents go on to describe to the kids that you should go around and adventure around and look at the house and see the different rooms. Maybe you'll find some treasures and some trinkets and toys and stuff like that. As the kids go around and do this, right before they go to do it, as a matter of fact, the grandparents warn them about a particular room they're not allowed to go inside of. And uh, Gretchen at one point sees the grandfather going into this room with a platter of pancakes. So from that synopsis, you take from the title with it, that there's probably some kind of monster hiding out in the, in the castle. Um, and that's pretty much the story here. And some of the particular choices <laughs> of certain characters in this book are very questionable, uh, especially for the adult characters. But 
I gotta say, I was with this book most of the time. Once it really gets going about halfway through, it just kind of takes off. It becomes a very fun, wild read where it just does not slow down and stop. You know, Goosebumps chapters are designed to be short, kind of like the James Patterson method, being short and having a really good cliffhanger at the end of each chapter where you want to keep going. You want to just keep reading before you go to bed and you can't stop. And this is a great example of a book that really takes advantage of that and really goes well with that. And it just, it has a great pacing to it. It really does. It's not that it's super plot filled. It's not like it's super suspenseful, but it has a tension to it that I think works really well. The description of the monster is not the greatest. I'm very much not impressed. It's kind of just like, have you ever seen like some of these old black and white 1950s horror movies that I review on the channel sometimes? And have you ever seen people take like the little details like of a couple of different animals? Like they, they kind of rip off the book of Revelation in the Bible, like where they'll be like, oh, well, we'll have like a, a gorilla body and a, a hawk head and, you know, wings from a Pegasus or something. I don't know, something stupid like that. You ever seen that? That's kind of what the monster is here. And it's lazy, in my opinion. It's just lazy. Instead of trying to think of something new, uh, it's like the Demogorgon from Stranger Things. It's like a whole new monster that people had never really seen anything entirely like that when it came out back when first season of Stranger Things came out. It was something neat, you know, something with Freddy Krueger back in 1984 or Michael Myers or really anything like that. There weren't many masked killers aside from Leatherface when the, the original Halloween came out. So it's kind of neat when you think about that. Um, this monster's kind of lazy in the design area. I won't spoil too much, but yeah, it wasn't that great. Um, but the threat of this monster was kind of interesting. And I liked that. And I'm going to be honest with you, <laughs> like the last two or three chapters of this book, I was with this book for a long time, and that last like two or three chapters of this book just kind of ruined it. And it's sad, because I feel like the more of the, what I consider to avoid away from most of these, what I consider to be possibly bad books that I haven't read in the Goosebumps series yet, what I have less of, le left of the classic series, a lot of those books seem like they're going to be something I'm not going to like. But I try to you know, pace them out, read a couple of bad ones, or expected bad ones, to get some surprises here and there. And then mix them in every two or three books with a book that I want to read from like the GYG series or the Series 2000 or anything like that, Slappy World, whatever. Um, I try to do that to keep myself interested and to keep you guys interested as well. And I can tell you up front, man, this one I was with it for so long. And that last like two chapters of the book just really let me down. It really disappointed me. It felt like everything we were building to was just kind of like a whatever moment. Like Again, very much like I Am Your Evil Twin, the previous book I reviewed right before this, it felt like Stein didn't know how to end the book. And it kind of just wasted what I spent time-wise on this read. I'm glad I got to make a video about it. I'm glad I get to talk about it. And I hope there's a TV episode that I'm pretty confident that there is out there. I'm hoping that it's better than this. I'm hoping it improves and makes it really worthwhile. But dude, I'm going to be honest with you with how goofy that show is and how much I love it for that. I have a feeling that it's going to do one of two things. It's going to be identical to this story and really kind of be a waste. Or it could really lean into that goofy nature about the end of this book and really do something fun and creative and special that I'll like. So I'm very curious if there is a TV episode, which again, I'm almost certain there is. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm almost certain. I'm hoping I really like that, and maybe you'll see the review tomorrow for that, and hopefully I can say something very positive about it. But anyway, when it comes to How to Kill a Monster, <laughs> it's a very underwhelming cover. Again, this film takes, or this book takes place in a castle. This room looks like it's a regular old kid's bedroom. However, in the book, the room that our main character Gretchen stays in is described as... Uh, a very open space with like nothing in it but like a, a wobbly chest of drawers and nothing really else no windows nothing <laughs> this is just kind of weak man uh, this does not look like a castle bedroom out of an old rundown castle in the swamp and i like the swamp setting i love the castle setting like i said that really adds some atmosphere to the story the almost maze-like home that they're in that has like four or five stories that stuff's interesting man i really dig it i like imagining in my head what it looks like um, I'm very impressed with that part of it, but it just shows that Stein has flaws, and this is a book that really is flawed, man. It just kind of falls apart, frankly, for me. Anyway, when it comes to How to Kill a Monster, did you guys love this one? Did you hate it? Put all your thoughts and comments down below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. If I had to rate it on a five-star basis, just like with the previous book, I'd give this about a three out of five stars. I was really with it, and then some of the choices with the adults make no sense, and <laughs> just really 
make you kind of wonder about certain things. I can't really tell you about it because of the secrecy of the spoiler-free nature of this review. Um, maybe we'll talk about it down in the comments a little bit, but it's embarrassing, frankly. Adults are morons in Goosebumps books almost always. Um, this is a fantastic example of that. Anyway, what do you think? Put your thoughts and comments down below. Three out of five stars for me, guys. Three out of five stars. That's the best I can do. I thought I was going to give it higher than that, but it, it really, really falls apart, <laughs> to be honest with you. What would you guys think about this one once again? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it. Are you disappointed that I didn't like this one? I don't hear many people say they love this one. But it's one of those situations like You Can't Scare Me and Ghost Camp that I was hoping that I would love it and everybody else would not be that impressed with it. Um, just because I love when I find a gem like that that's my gem that I love in the Phantom and everybody else seems to hate for whatever reason. But anyway, <laughs> I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, thank you for guys for watching. Happy Easter once again. I hope to find out that there is a TV episode or something that I can do a video and talk about it with you guys. Really looking forward to that. So once again, happy Easter. God bless you guys. Hope you know Jesus and goodbye.